When you think of Finland, the image of Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus in Lapland may spring to mind. Or perhaps the thought of a quiet land where ramshackle cottages dotted beside lakes and vast expanses of forest seem more appropriate. It's said that Helsinki, Finland's capital, is a paradise for lovers of art and architecture, which is all well and good. However, it only takes a second to realise that there is more to this city than just pretty sunsets and reindeer. With over three million album sales worldwide, platinum records and a string of number one hits across Europe, the band, formerly known as His Infernal Majesty, are definitely taking the world by storm, revitalising the goth scene with a new sound and putting the love back into metal. I was to describe him in one word. Mm, successful. They, they are a unit. I have to say that sexy. I think their music is very sexy. <laughs> Chain. You know, it's, it's flexible, but still it's so strong that it's hard to break. Romantic. Yeah. I would describe him, it would be love. And mystic somehow, like inside. Him is a band that seems to transcend musical achievements and continue to produce poetic, melancholy music that seems to pulsate the message of love and death. But to understand the band, we first have to understand where it all began. There's maybe like five million people living here and maybe like ten guys who can be in a rock band and sing as good as Villa Valo. He's the perfect frontman. Tim's charismatic frontman, Veal Vallo, was born in Helsinki in 1976. Growing up in the Vallo family was a bit unusual, as father Kari owned a sex shop. I am Kari Vallo, Ville Vallo's father. About five, six years old, I, put, I pushed him in sport, but uh, interesting more and more music. And uh, I try put Ville in driving school, because Ville is without driving license now. But uh, music takes all time. It's interesting very much, very much music. As a young boy, Ville had a natural flair for music, and soon tried his hand at as many musical instruments as possible. Ville uh, is about about 10 years old, he find first guitar and uh, train, training very much and uh, in school he is a uh, music class and uh, they learning uh, many, many kind of music in the school. School days were filled with problems as Veal was regularly in fights and was seen as a disruptive student. At the age of seven, his behaviour had already been carefully monitored because of his antisocial behaviour. Veal was even allowed to draw during classes in an attempt to help him relax. But Villa is quite good at uh, doing painting and, uh, and drawing. And uh, when Villa is very young, he is drawing cartoons. And uh, his imagination is very good. He's very good. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> yes. When Will is very young, he liked very much Star Wars stories and Darth Vader is very near his heart and, and he's uh, drawing very much in cartoons, Darth Vader and company and like very much we have home all old all, all pictures. Veal submersed himself into the sounds of bands such as Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin and Kiss, as well as the best of folk and country music. Veal worshipped his idols Kiss and began wearing makeup himself. Sometimes I see, see Veal doing makeup and, and, uh, 
and maybe one my wife sister told that how can you do it this and uh, and then uh, later I see Will many times he moving home about 17 years old and uh, he's starting his career and uh, very many times his makeup here and people looking. Miko Henrik Julius Pananen, nicknamed Midge, was born in 1974 in Helsinki. His father was an orchestra musician and his mother was an actress, so it was no surprise that he began to have an interest in music. At the age of 12, Midge and Veal first met at school. They both shared a love for the bass guitar and started to jam together regularly. With Miko and, uh, and uh, Veal, they are training together very many hours and afternoon and after they come to school. Miko Viljami Lindstrom, otherwise known as Linde, was born in 1976. His first instrument was an acoustic guitar, which he received when he was 10. He soon enrolled into music classes, where he started to perfect his ambition of becoming a famous guitarist. Veal and Linde first met at senior school and decided to form a band together called Aurora. The band experienced touring at an early age, as they travelled by bus through Europe, playing at local schools and venues. The trip was financed by the band selling donuts and what little money they received for their gigs. This managed to cement their friendship for the time ahead. In 1993, Veal and Linde began recording some demo tracks. School friend Midge was so impressed with the music that he joined them. They created three demo tracks entitled Serpent Ride, Borellus and The Heartless. The guys agreed to continue working on new music until they had a good range of songs to promote. Midge and Linde felt Veal should be the band's frontman as they began to try and get gigs. But I remember being on their first gig in my hometown, Vasa, and there were so few people in there, just a few people, and they played very well, but I, it was disappointing for them of course, but it's really funny to think about it now because now they're so huge, they would never have that kind of a gig where there would be only a few people. But I was there and they were great. It was then time for them to showcase their music at the well-known club Tavastia. Because Mr. Merima, who, who is boss Tavastia, he liked Ville and uh, uh, give Ville the first chance to come in Tavastia because Tavastia is the best place in Finland. Over the years, Tavastia's sister club semi-final has been known for providing young bands with an opportunity to perform on stage and is run by Tommy Hammerlinen, a.k.a. Rudy. Uh, my name is Tommy Hammerlinen and um, at the present moment and for the past 12 years I've been running a club called semi-final in Helsinki. At semi-final 10 years ago maybe I came across an obviously talented young man, not even 18 at that point, and his name was Villevalo. And him played their first gig at semi-final. It must have been, if I remember correctly, it was 95 New Year's Eve. It was kind of a, at least Ville was playing there, and, and, and if I remember correctly, Mige and Linde, possibly two, but it wasn't him proper yet. He asked me questions about about the business and I tried to answer them. Yeah, but it was obvious that he was gifted. With the band now touting the new EP, there was much speculation as to why they were singing in English. Again, him seemed to go against the norm. In the 1990s, it really wasn't that popular in, in Finland to, to, to sing in English. I think many artists, because we have had, in Finland we have had these, you know, uh, disappointments, because we have had these groups that we have tried to, to send to abroad to make a career, and those bands were singing in English. They were not necessarily doing good in Finland, but we assume that now, because we have this band singing in English that sounds good, we should, you know, put them abroad and, and try to make uh, a career uh, outside of Finland. And most of those 
uh, attempts uh, failed miserably. And I think because of that, we had this skepticism that we shouldn't you know, have bands uh, singing in English because they weren't really popular in Finland and they also had lots of troubles abroad. So I think most of the people were like, okay, let's sing in Finnish. It's more popular in Finland. Releasing their first album, Him recorded an EP entitled 666 Ways to Love, Prologue. The EP was released in 1996 and featured a cover version of Chris Isaac's Wicked Game. Well, okay, so the first EP came out in 1996 and radio started playing Wicked Game on radio a lot. A weird thing happened when they released their first singles my girlfriend bought them and it was like, I think that was a sign to me that, okay, this band is going to be big. Because my girlfriend doesn't buy, you know, he, she might buy album, but she doesn't buy singles. And, and she bought their first single, I think. And that was a sign to me that, okay, they're going to come really big. One of the things has to be, as I say, the, the commercial element of the rock they're doing. Not, not just the goth side of it. I mean, they had a massive success with a Chris Isaac cover, Wicked Game. Uh, that took them, obviously, into fans of Chris Isaac. Uh, now, Chris Isaac fans obviously aren't goth, but, but they did such a good version of it, it was an acceptable one, and it's a great song to play on the radio. We've always been playing loads of cover tunes by Madonna and, and Ramones and all sorts of weird acts, and, and uh, you know, it just felt good. That's the reason why we did it. People know Wicked Game, their version of that song, but, but still, there wasn't anything, you know, it wasn't like, you know, a huge thing when they released their f first EP. It wasn't like a bomb would have exploded. It wasn't anything like that. Uh, uh, it was a good song. People know the band, but I think still, you know, people weren't sure what is this? Because like that kind of stuff on radio wasn't really popular during that time. You know, we're turning into, into a silly, you know, heavy metal jukebox sort of a thing. We've been playing so many cover tunes, so, so nowadays we're just doing Wicked Game, but that was, you know, we did our first tours in Germany and, and uh, everywhere else in Europe we played that a lot and people seem to like it. It's a good track. In our playlist here on ARFM we have about 300 uh, main songs, you know, and him are up there. They are one of the most popular. We've currently got the Chris Isaac cover still on our A-list. Um, because it's, it's one of the most requested songs we've ever had. With a fair amount of hype surrounding him's goth metal sound, it didn't take long before the record executives were hot on their tails and offering them contracts. It was A&R executive Asko Kalonen who gave him their first record deal quickly signing them to BMG Finland. As in all bands, there is always someone there to make sure the group are in the right place at the right time while on tour. I'm fucking naughty. <laughs> this is what the band calls me, like, it's, it's mama in German. Uh, what happened is, like, um, it was New Year's Eve in 96. I was here in Helsinki and I was going out to a club called Lepako. Lepako means the bat in English. And him was performing that night. And I was like, heard of them or saw them the first time. I was like, when they were, you know, performing, it's like, shit, what is this? Is this the reincarnation of Jim Morrison or what? I mean, he just looked like that at that time, you know, like that curly hair down to his shoulders. And I was just like, oh, goodness, you know, it's so good. So I managed to get backstage and talk to that dude called Villa Vallo. I was like, man, do you have a record deal or what, you know? And he was like, well, yeah, we're signed to BMG Finland, you know, and then, uh, yeah, but what outside Finland? Nah, nothing yet. Yeah. 
He was like, okay, here it is something for you. I was like, oh yes, I would be so pleased, you know. So I walked out to Germany and um, it happens that my, I have my own company, promotion, publishing and so on. And I'm working very much for BMG. So I thought, okay, easy, you know, they can license it. And I took it out to Germany and said like, hey man, you got to see that fucking band, you know. So they came over to Finland, we played another gig for them and the deal was done. They were like impressed as I was. Since then I'm working for them and I did their first record deal in Germany and two other countries. So um, since when then we're working together, I'm doing the promotion for them, all the PR and assisting to the management and um, being the mother, you know, for all the little aches which are happening on tour. It's like boys are getting tired sometimes on tour and you have to like weep them a little bit. After overwhelming success in Finland, the band had their sights set on breaking the German market. But it wasn't going to be easy. Let's put it like this. Um, there is not that much media in Germany around. Or it was not at that time to work it through. The radios were saying like, no fucking way. It's too dark. It's too... Uh, you know, negative and you know, we won't play it. So it was really hard to work on it and I had to convince everybody, you know, like, whoa, come on, it's a fucking great band. And then we had that Wicked Game was actually doing it. And we did like a totally new video for that in Germany with a like well-known producer and a very fancy video, very expensive video as well. And that finally kicked it off. You know, MTV was going for it, Vivo was going for it, and then the radios picked it up. I've got the strangest feeling The release of Hymn's first official album was entitled Greatest Love Songs Volume 666, which was produced by Hilly Hilsamar. The album is a beautiful romantic mix of ideas about life, love and death. Wicked Game was again featured on the album and proved to be a big hit. Uh, when that first came out in Finland, um, it was quite a big big hit here. And it made to finish album chart, but it didn't go to top 10. It was on, it was 11 on the chart. And, and I think that pretty much tells the story that in Finland at that time, uh, that type of music, of course there was fans and, and people who were <coughs> interested in that, that kind of music, but it wasn't really that popular. I've got this drowning feeling. It was a kind of um, a contemporary gothic rock kind of vibe. A lot of the music that was coming out at that time on the goth scene was, um, it was quite bleepy. There was a bit of an explosion of electro that was happening. A lot of it come over from Europe with bands like Frontline Assembly and Two Front, uh, Front 242. And what him were doing was different. It was a sort of a return to the kind of classic rock of, of the goth scene with bands like Sisters in Mercy, Fields and Nephilim, those kind of bands that were very big in the 80s. I think it developed, it developed throughout the time when they were more and more playing live, you know, and when people saw more and more of Villa, actually, because he's uh, quite a big presence on the stage when he acts. And that makes a lot also to the success. But it was a sort of a